is going on ladies and gentlemen? AJ Good here at the House of Masks and you guys know what time it is. We are doing another episode of the definitive Slipknot Mask History. The series where we set out to catalog every single Slipknot mask that was ever worn by any Slipknot member ever. So far these videos just keep getting better and better so I hope that I can continue that because today's video is probably going to be a little lackluster in comparison to the others. Yes, that is because today's video is about Craig Jones aka 133 aka number five. And as we all know, aside from the first album, his masks really did not change too much. But I bet they changed a little more than you think. And I bet he probably had more versions than you think. So we're about to hop on into this, starting with the Mate Feed Kill Repeat era. And I want to give a huge shout out to Nico's website once again for helping me out with these videos. Slipknothistory.com. It's pretty much an online catalog for all things related to Slipknot. Masks, jumpsuits, and everything in between. Make sure to head over to slipknothistory.com and check out the full website. It really is super, super cool. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop on into this. We're going to be starting out with Mate Feed Kill Repeat for Craig Jones. All right, so for the Mate Feed Kill Repeat Craig Jones mask timeline, it does get a little sloppy. I'm not exactly sure in which order these first few masks go, but bear with me. I'm taking my best guesses along with my buddies in the Slipknot Masks and Jumpsuits group, and here's what we've got for you. First off, we've got something that I don't even think a lot of people know about. We've got Craig Jones playing guitar for Slipknot with pantyhose as a mask. Yes, that is right. When Craig Jones joined Slipknot, he was actually the guitarist. This was back in the earliest of the early days of Slipknot. Even before Mick joined the band, Craig was on guitar and later switched over to samples, but while he was on guitar, he was known to wear pantyhose over his face and the same spam t-shirt for every show. Now once we move away from the pantyhose as a mask, we actually have another clown mask in the band. Again, Craig Jones actually sported a clown mask for at least one show. Now I have seen this footage in person, but unfortunately it just does not exist on the internet. I saw this years and years and years ago at a convention on a friend of mine's computer, and while unfortunately there are no shots or videos of Craig wearing this that I can put in this video, I promise that you guys can take my word for it. I will vouch. And we also have pictures of Clown holding this mask rotted years and years later. Next up, we see Craig Jones yet again experimenting with his mask choice. Now we have an old Topstone wolf mask. Once again, only seems to be known to be worn at one show. And it is believed that after this show, Craig actually switched to his youth space helmet, or the Sinclair helmet as it's known in the hobby. And he would end up sporting this helmet not only through Mate Feed Kill Repeat, but through self-titled as well, with lots and lots of changes. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. First up, we have the first version of the Sinclair youth space helmet. And basically what we've got here is a stock youth space helmet that doesn't actually have anything to do with the Sinclair gas station. This was just a space helmet that you could find commonly at different Halloween and costume shops. Craig added green duct tape to the base and the top of the helmet as well as a Sinclair decal. It's unknown whether or not Joey had anything to do with this seeing as how Joey was the one that worked at Sinclair and Joey actually added a different Sinclair gasoline sticker to one of his earlier mate feed kill repeat masks. But this is where it's started and it continued to evolve through Mate Feed Kill Repeat, eventually having the visor removed as well as a diamond shaped hole cut into the mouth. Next we see it with the MBU gas mask finally added. As you can see the MBU does have the hose still attached, it's just tucked into Craig's shirt. Next up we have a very uncommon version. This is what would eventually be known as the pre-self-titled variant. As you can see Craig has now painted the helmet black but there are still no nails added. Alright, admit it, some of those gotcha. I think for the most part people do know about about the wolf mask at this point, but I think that the pantyhose and the clown definitely get some people. Very, very uncommonly known Craig masks, unless you're a big fan of this channel. So leading off with the pre-self-titled helmet obviously takes us right into the self-titled era. So here are Craig Jones' self-titled masks. Masks. <laughs> Now, 
Next up, we have the extremely early self-titled variation. This is the same youth helmet and the same MBU with nails and a strobe light added. As we move further into the beginning of the self-titled era, we can see that the mask remains almost the same, but the paint itself is starting to chip off. And even further into the self-titled era, we can see that the hose has now been removed from the gas mask. Something interesting to point out about this shot here is that the nails on Craig's helmet actually do not have any electric tape around them yet. This is just something that I wanted to point out now because this image is so clear. And later on during mid to late self-titled, you can see that Craig added a lot of electric tape around the base of those nails to keep them from falling into the helmet. As you can also see, we've got a lot more paint chipping off of the helmet, far more chipping off around the top of the head and the neck area. And we also see the first cracks in the MBU visor. As we move on, this setup is just starting to fall apart more and more. Even more paint chipped off, the cracks in the visor are getting worse and the nails are getting saggier. Now with self-titled out of the way, I did just want to throw out there that the self-titled Craig is one of the most special pieces in the fucking world. No doubt about it, it is just one of the coolest combinations ever. I don't know how or why that thing evolved into what it did, but it is definitely something special. Ask anybody that owns a completed self-titled Craig, whether it's an early Ozfest version or a Dynamo late self-titled version, they are just fucking cool. I also find it really, really interesting that these bands always tend to use the rarest stuff, and Craig's helmet is a great example of that. Not only are those youth space helmets hard to find, like really hard to find, but the MBU gas masks are also really hard to find, specifically because they have to be black and they have to still have the nose cup, and those nose cups just don't really exist. But right down to the actual nails that Craig used, they are just not common. You'd think that you'd just be able to go to any hardware store and find some gutter spikes, but they aren't correct. These ones come from a different country than America, and they're really, really hard to find. So I just wanted to point that out. I think that that this is one of the most criminally underrated Slipknot masks in the world. It's not even really a mask. I don't know what you would call it. It's just a combination of stuff that makes its own thing. Can't praise the self-titled Craig enough. But with that being said, we're on to Iowa, boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, moving into the Iowa cycle, and this is the Craig mask that would pretty much set the style for the rest of Craig's career. The only thing is that they got it right here, and then they never got it right again. Every mask after this has just been a downgraded version of the Iowa mask. I'm not sure how they managed to make one look cool here, but could never figure that out again, but whatever. We're going to start off with the clean Iowa, and I do believe that these are all one mask, so we start off clean. As you can see, everything is nice and shiny. Shiny. The mask appears to be smooth. There's absolutely no rust whatsoever. And both of the metal pieces for the nostrils are intact. We move along some time later and the mask now has added rust. We can see that down around the neck it is starting to fold, getting lots of different creases and textures. And we've also lost one of the metal pieces for the nostrils. Now this mask's entire life cycle was pretty much just it falling apart. As you can see in this photo, there's not a real big difference between the last, but we do technically have a bent nail. And that is a difference, so I'll add it to the list. You just made the list! Here towards the end of Iowa, you can see that the mask is completely swollen. There are many, many different bulges and creases, different wrinkles and textures going on because the mask was a foam latex mask, meaning that all of the sweat and the water from the live performances had just been soaking into this mask over the course of the last few years. The mask was essentially just a giant sponge with a latex skin on the outside. As you can see, it has gotten so swollen that the zipper has actually popped open. The zipper is still in the closed fashion, but it just stretched apart from itself. So the handle's on the exact same side that it was when the mask was in better condition. Still zipped shut, but it's actually popped open here. We're also missing a few nails, and we're missing both of the nostril rings. And now last but not least, for Iowa, we have the Freddy vs. Jason Craig. And while this is still just the Iowa Craig, you can see that this thing is absolutely destroyed. Looking like a raisin. You raisin looking ass. Joe Dirt Ship Meteor looking ass. <clears throat> you can see here everything that I said before is still true and there's actually a split on the chin. This is because all of the sweat from the inside of the mask would drip down towards the chin area as well as all of the water that Craig would drink. So this all would build up around the chin and neck area and that is why through all of these photos you can see that the neck and the chin area was the one that deteriorated the most. Now we have a full on split and you can see all of that raw foam on the inside. Again the zipper mouth has continued to widen just getting bigger and bigger. The eyes are almost rotten shut and the mask is just pretty much unusable at this point. This is the last time that we would see the Iowa Craig.
All right, guys, volume three, Craig Jones, essentially just the same mask breaking down yet again, just like Iowa. And a fun fact, this mask is essentially the Iowa mask, just with longer nails added and a slightly different finish. So yeah, sculpturally, it is the same mask, or at least a retooling of the Iowa. The only difference we have here is that the nails have been made much longer. And as you can see here on the first version, we've got a nice brand new clean copy. And from there, we go to a slightly more damaged copy. Obviously, the nails are starting to to sag a little bit. We're actually missing a couple from the front of the face, and we're also missing one of the metal eyelets that covers the nostril. Even further down the line, and we are missing a ton of nails. I would say that easily half of the nails that were originally in the mask when it was brand new are gone. We're starting to see some misshaping and some rot around the holes where the nails were, as well as around the neck area. More towards the end of the mask's life cycle, you can see that this thing is absolutely destroyed. How many times have I said absolutely destroyed in this series? I feel like it's just way too much, but I don't know another way to describe these masks. I mean, look at that thing. But for real, it is aging in a very similar manner to the Iowa Craig. Once again, a foam latex mask from the same sculpt is just sitting there soaking up all of the sweat and moisture. So it's starting to swell up like a sponge. Now in this shot, you can see that they've added nails where some were missing in the last image. And you can also see that the zipper has not only been unzipped, but the handle itself is broken. So there is no zipper tag hanging from the mask. And clearly the rot is getting far worse around all of the holes. That's what she said. <laughs> And for some reason, they have just now reinserted a new eyelet into the nostril. Now, the last version of the Volume 3 Craig that we're going to see is actually a different copy. As you can see, this one is rotting very, very heavily. It's also missing some nails similar to the last shot, but the mouth is zipped. We are missing both eyelets from the nostril holes. And as you can see, the neck is a little longer on this copy and frays out as opposed to the other copy that we saw earlier. Now, this would be the last style of this Craig mask that we would see for Volume 3, but we still got to get that death mask in there. So last but not least on volume three, we have Craig's death mask. Once again, there's not much that I can say about this mask that I haven't said about the death masks in all of the prior episodes. This was just a plastic face mask of Craig's actual face. It was a very foggy, translucent plastic, and the members of the band would put black face paint on in certain areas underneath the mask. These masks were seen during some promotional shots at the Houdini Mansion and were often seen being used live for the Vermilion performances during the volume three era. All right, guys, so all of the biggest changes were on those first four albums, Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat, through Volume 3. The rest of these are all extremely similar, and even each individual album didn't go through that many changes, so we're just going to clump them all together into one big segment. You're not going to see me between those. That might be good or bad, depending on who you are. But we're about to run All Hope Is Gone through We Are Not Your Kind. So get ready. Let's hop on into it. Starting off the All Hope Is Gone mask list like we always do, we've got these big old purgatory potatoes, aka the All Hope Is Gone promo purgatory masks. These were just giant paper mache head and face sculpts of the band members. These were used for some promo material as well as the psychosocial music video. Moving on to Craig's regular All Hope Is Gone mask, here we have it nice, new, and clean. As you can see, those nails just keep getting bigger. They are slightly longer than they were for volume three, and as you'll also notice, we we finally have a new sculpt. Now, I don't know what exactly it is about this sculpt, but it is far less sinister than the Iowa in the Volume 3. I feel as though the head got rounder, it looks more like a bowling ball now, as opposed to having actual sculpted in jaw lines. They've also changed the mouth and the zipper area, now we have a more oval shaped zipper area, just kind of takes away from the tightness of the mask. I don't know, I don't know if what I'm saying here makes sense, but the mask definitely went downhill from the prior two albums. Now, once again, this mask's entire career just consists of falling apart. We start losing nails like always, we get some random weathering here and there, and eventually we have an almost bald Craig mask. This brings us to the death mask yet again. This was worn during the Vermilion performance at Download 2009, and it was also worn three years later at the Mayhem Fest meet and greet in 2012. <laughs> All 
Alright, point five, the gray chapter. Now here, first up, we've got the mask that was used in the Devil and I music video. This does appear to be an old All Hope Is Gone mask with a bunch of nails added that all seem to be bent from headbanging. Now clearly most of the members wore some All Hope Is Gone masks in the beginning of this music video before they died in the music video. So this makes sense. I mean, it is just technically an All Hope Is Gone mask. I'm not sure if it is a stage used one or not, but those nails at least definitely came out of one of his prior All Hope Is Gone masks. You can tell because they are all bowed in one direction due to how long they are and how much inertia they took from being headbanged in every single night. Is headbanged a word? I don't know. It is now. And next up, we've got the actual .5 Craig Jones mask, and you'll notice that sculpturally, it is almost identical to the All Hope Is Gone mask. It may still be the same mold, or it may be a slight retool, but the biggest difference with this mask from the All Hope Is Gone mask is the size of the spikes yet again. And this one is super interesting because this is the first Craig mask to feature multiple length nails. We have three or four different sized nails going on here. Some of them look to be over a foot long, others seem to stick around six or seven inches. And that is it for 4.5. The mask really did not go through too many changes during this cycle. So here we are, last but not least, We Are Not Your Kind, the album that is still in full swing while recording this video. Yet again, we have an unsinister Craig mask. Not sure how or why they keep fucking this up, but hey, it is what it is. This is a completely new sculpt from the All Hope Is Gone and the .5 mask, and I just, I really, I'm trying to say facts about this thing, but fucking, come on, look at that thing. What? It's like if, if you told someone to make a Craig Jones cake this is what we would end up with. Anyways, I'm here to explain the mask, not roast it. Uh, the biggest difference here is, once again, the nail sizes. Clearly, we have shorter nails on the sides, and then we have a longer nail mohawk protruding from the middle. Now, again, this mask hasn't seemed to go through many changes, but I will say that they definitely trimmed that neck up, as you'll see in this next photo. Honestly, I think it looked a little bit better with the longer neck. I don't know why, but I just don't like this as much. Oh, hey, look, he unzipped his zipper. So, yeah, there you have it. All of Craig Jones' Slipknot masks. He had more than you thought. I know he did. So, now that we're at the end, you guys know what to do. Make sure to let me know what your all-time favorite Craig Jones mask is. Make sure to drop it in a comment below. I will go ahead and let you guys know my favorite, surprise, surprise, the self-titled mask. While I do love the OzFest version with the hose and the strobe light still attached, I still think I gotta go with the mid to late self-titled once it started to really get busted up. It just added something so much cooler with the flaking off paint, pure white against the black, the droopy saggy nails, the busted up NBU. Something super, super cool about that. So that is my favorite. I know, big shocker. Make sure to let me know your guys' is down below. And that is going to do it for this video. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very, very much for watching. Say no to drugs and alcohol, and until next time, we'll see you guys later. Take it